Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a 10 facts video all about my Sphinx cat. The most common thing that people want to know is what do they feel like? Do they feel like my skin? Are they sticky? Are they slimy? Like, ew, gross, what is that? Well, actually, Sphinx cats are not totally hairless. They actually feel like hot water bottles wrapped in sweet or chamois leather. You know, the, the cloth that you use to wipe your glasses with? Yeah. Some of them may have a little more fur than others down their backs and also down their tail. You can see, it's got a bit of fur down there. Say hi, baby. But all in all, they do have bits of hair here and there, sparse as they may be, but they are not completely hairless. <laughs> Sphinx cats come in many different colours as well, yes. so my cats look pretty alike, but they're not actually the same colour. Because they're red and white Sphinx. Yes, you are! Effie is more cream. Say hello, little girl. Um, basically, whatever skin colour that they have is what colour their fur will be. So we have um, solid black. We have white. Greens, uh, tordy, uh, colorblind, and so on. Despite the name, the Sphinx cat did not originate from Egypt. <laughs> yeah, that's because it resembles the cat figures from ancient Egypt. But in actual fact, the first Sphinx kitten was born in Toronto, Canada. This little guy named Poon was given birth to by a black and white domestic short hair queen named Elizabeth. Poon was then backbred with its mother to then create a line of hairless cats. So what? Here's a myth buster for you, Sphinx cats are not hypoallergenic. So a lot of people think that if you're allergic to cats, then it must be fur. So why not get a hairless cat, right? Wrong. What you're actually allergic to is the FELD1 protein. When normal cats shed their fur, the dander gets spread around just as well. So your allergies flare up. For Sphinx cats, however, the dander kind of just sticks to the oils in their skin. And guys, I'm highly allergic to cats. Let's just put it out there. My eyes get red and watery, they get itchy, and worst case scenario, I get really, really bad asthma. Thankfully, my allergies don't act up as much, or they don't act up at all, even around my skin cats. Unless, of course, I've been touching them, and then I just rub my eyes, and then, hey, red itchy eyes for an hour. So if you're allergic to cats and you're thinking of getting a hairless one, please try your best to go and visit one near you before you get one, because you may still be allergic to them. And here's another myth buster. Sphinx cats do require a lot of maintenance. Yeah, obviously my cats need no brushing, <laughs> but they do need regular baths because if not, they're gonna leave oil spots everywhere and trust me, they get onto your hands, your clothes, your furniture, your mom, your dad, your grandma, your sister, your brother, everywhere. So yes, I do bathe my Sphinx cats once a week or once in two weeks depending on how oily and grimy they get. They also need to get their ears cleaned out because they don't have any hair in them to keep the dust and dirt particles out, so therefore they produce a lot of ear wax that needs to be cleaned up. I also have to clean the dirt out from in between their little toes because uh, the oil goes up there as well. So yeah, I would say that a Sphinx cat does require a lot of grooming and maintenance, uh, probably a little more than normal cats do. Sphinx cats are about 4 degrees warmer than normal cats. So one of the first few things people tell me when they touch my cats is Ooh, they're so warm! Eh, hey, panasin badan dia ada demam ke? So because they have little to no fur, Sphinx cats lose body heat more rapidly. And because they lose so much heat, they're constantly seeking more heat. So you'll always find them sitting on the TV. In front of the TV, on the fridge, the back of my water dispenser. And sometimes after I bathe them, or if it's a cold day, I like to put their little shirts on them, just to give them a little extra warmth. <laughs> Sphinx cats do get sunburned, like they can get sunburned. So as you already know, since they love the heat, they love sitting in the sunlight. But you gotta be careful when you take them out for walks or even when they're just sitting around at home in the sunlight. Just make sure they're not exposed to direct sunlight for too long. They won't go bad, they won't expire, but they might get sunburned and it's gonna be pretty painful for them. So there's one Sphinx cat I'm sure all of you have seen. I'm talking about Mr. Bigglesworth from the oh so popular Austin Powers movie. And behold the world ransom for one million dollars. Originally a long-haired Persian cat which permanently became bald after an escape in a Persian capsule, something like that. So they got this Sphinx cat named Ted Nugent to play this permanently bald Mr. Bigglesworth. Sphinx cats are the biggest attention seekers out there. So they are known to be one of the more um, social breeds of cat. They love the company of humans. Cats, dogs, rabbits, birds, hamsters. It might not be a good idea to mix them with hamsters because they might eat them. Anyway, yeah, they may look like they're constantly hatching an evil plan. But they're actually one of the most um, playful and cuddly, loving creatures on the face of this earth. Really? Sphinx cats are relatively healthy, but they're more susceptible to breed-specific health issues, such as uh, respiratory issues due to the lack of hair. 
uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy (HCM), which is just fancy term for heart disease, uh, hereditary myopathy, which affects their muscle function, and uh, they also have sensitive digestive systems. I think that's uh, very important to find a reputable breeder if you are looking to get one. Do your research, ask questions, get to know more about the generation of the kitten that you plan to get, uh, whether they are scanned for HCM or if they are at risk of any possible hereditary diseases. Sphinx cats are expensive cats. A lot of care goes into bringing them up, taking care of them. So I personally wouldn't trust anyone who's selling or giving away, giving them up for adoption for maybe about $400 or so. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are bad cats. They're not rotten or anything, but I believe you get what you pay for. So do your research before deciding on getting one. Remember that pets are not toys, they're not furniture, they're not ornaments, they are your lifelong companions. So be responsible, human being. And that is it. 10 little known facts about Sphinx cats. If you have any questions or things you would like to say, just leave them in the comments down below. And I will see if I can do a, a little Q&A, maybe. I don't know. So till next time. Here on my show, then you can catch chit chat I spit some bars when I'm done talking about my cats Yeah, I just shared a couple facts, mm, maybe ten Stay tuned for more next week, yeah, I'll see you again